Standard Motorcycle and Power Sports News fam. This is Jackie Van Ham here with your Ride of the Week. We are at Mama Tried, this annual show that happens here, this excellent custom bike show. I tracked down the builder of this stunning gold bike, Mr. Hawk Lachey from Vintage Technologies. That's it. Welcome to the show, my friend. Thank you so much for taking the time to talk us through this beautiful gold bike. Can you give us some of the details of this excellent machine? Uh, sure. Um, <laughs> the name of this bike is Pure Nastiness. Uh, the Ness part comes as it's a tribute bike to the late Arlen Ness. Uh, some of the neck components in the frame were actually the original blanks from the 70s parts. Uh, I narrowed the chassis up a little bit to try to complement the digger slash drag bike theme that I was going for. Um, it's, it's kind of a melting pot of two different styles and I think it kind of worked out. Drag bikes are usually a fast, low thing and diggers are also fast and low looking. They just one was shiny and one wasn't, so I decided to blend them together. And this is what we came up with. <laughs> I love the easy explanation of the difference between a yeah. digger and a drag bike. Uh, yeah, it's, <laughs> it's, it's, uh, yeah, it's splitting hairs is what it is. There's not a lot of difference. Fine love. One's shiny, one's not. Uh, one yeah, might have a slightly yeah, wider yeah, tire yeah, than the other. Yeah, you know. How, how's that? It, okay, so let's get into the nuts and bolts of this because much like the blue bike that we looked at and on another show yeah. here on the Ride of the Week, um, we the more you look at your bikes, the more they like unfold. There's more like details as you get going into them. And I feel like this is the same. First glance, it's this beautiful gold bike. And then you start looking at all the details. So first things first, what power plant is this? What engine is this? Uh, this is a 1966 Harley Davidson generator shovel head. And what I, uh, what I did was I swapped the front cylinder and rear cylinder. Okay. And then I spun them 180 degrees so that all of the intake and the exhaust charge out the left side of the bike. I was wondering why it was on the left it, side. It, okay. It gave me the ability to balance kind of the, the camshaft side and the B side, I guess is what they're called. Okay. It gave a little bit of depth to both sides so it wasn't just a big cluttered thing over here and nothing over there. Timing versus drive side. Uh, yeah, exactly. So I, I, I did that basically to just fill that side of the bike up. And when you look at it from the rear view, you can kind of see it's more symmetrical that way instead of just everything hanging off. And it, it balanced the bike out a lot more. When I narrowed the frame uh, about an inch and three quarters, you could definitely see that a lot of the motor was normally just, that's normally like kind of hidden in the chassis. Yeah. Now it was kind of hanging out. So it was it was a pretty important thing to like get it to all dump out the other side. We. We used uh, some really rare uh, Hall Engineering nitromethane drag race cylinders from the late 60s. Uh, cool. I built an exposed rocker box uh, system out of it and kind of removed all the oil from the top end. It's just a greasable drag race top end now. This is a Rotax uh, centrifugal supercharger off of a Sea Dew watercraft. It's oh. actually a jet ski part. Oh, wow! Uh, the, the Super B S and S is just kind of the venerable carburetor for this type of bike, you know. They, they came out in the era of that. They were like one of the first original hot rod parts for these, and so it seemed fitting to do that. Okay. Um, the gold chains. Uh, I, I weld all my chain links together, so it gets rid of all the rivets and pins. And I've done it on the last couple of builds, and uh, the gold set's probably my favorite so far. Yeah, it's stunning, and I can't believe that the de attention to detail to remove the rivets with the with the rings uh, yeah. to weld them together. Well, I just weld them in place. I just weld and make a little figure eight pattern and weld and weld and weld and weld, and then you sculpt them all every every single link and polish them. <laughs> but I love how casually you say this. But I can't imagine the amount of time that went into this because this even more than your blue bike that we talked about. This to me reminds me of a watch. Oh, this is thank like you. this is like a jewel. This is like a watch and well, I we, love we, again we're from northern Montana so we have about nine months of build season I was just gonna say 10, 10 months of winter yeah, yeah, to sit inside and do this yeah yeah so we, we just fill up the welder in the fall and go for it you know that's about it. I love the details and where are the wheels from um, these wheels are actually a Barani high shoulder I custom made the hubs themselves these are original hall crafts that I've narrowed and I converted this one to an actual drum brake system uh, the front is a hall craft that I narrowed as well. And it was kind of funny when I began building this prior to COVID, I made these hubs and in that whole lull of two years of nothing going on, I wound up building uh, several sets of these hubs for different people all over the world, you know. So people were sending me original hall crafts, I was narrowing them. And then uh, Matt Carroll, the old nipple twister, he 
He uh, stretched them in nice stainless spokes with a two cross in the rear and a one cross in the front. Characteristically, a uh, spoke will cross four of spokes. So you'll call it a four cross, and okay. you'll see it on most, most standard wheels. When you open those spokes up, it makes it a little bit more sparse and, and an open floor plan. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. So, yeah, we, we try to get to every detail with it. I mean, I like to build bikes like an onion. I mean, the more you dig, like you're saying, the layers, you know, yeah. get in there. I build these bikes for everybody to enjoy, and, and I try to make it so get someone hooked and get them stopped with the bike. Yeah. And I know I had the good fortune of seeing this beautiful gold bike at Fuel Cleveland just a couple of weeks ago, and I knew I had to come track you down and talk about this excellent machine. Thank you so much for talking us through it so that way we can make sure it was one of our MPN's Ride of the Weeks. Thank you, Hawk. Thank you.